a universal health coverage that you would see Kenyans access affordable health and that was in 2018 but then COVID-19 happened so tonight we found we find out how much of a problem or distraction has COVID-19 been towards the achievement of universal health coverage. Of course, this is the agenda by the president that he aims that by 2022, before the end of his term, then most Kenyans should be enjoying and accessing, you know, affordable health. So tonight we speak with the Chief Administrative Secretary in the Minister of Health, Dr. Masi Mwangangi. It's a great pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you, thank you. Happy yeah. to be here. Pierre. Yeah, and yeah. you know when you you know, um, resumed office yes. in 20, that was in 2019. 2020. 2020, January, January yes. yes. 2020, January, the agenda was just to ensure that universal health coverage right. is attained by 2022. Yes. But then COVID-19 just yes. happened. Yes. Two months into, mm. you know, yes. at the Minister of Health. Maybe you can tell us how big of a problem, you know, is right. COVID-19? How much of mm. a distraction has mm. it caused mm. as far as attainment of universal health coverage right. is concerned? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, Purity, um, you know, to tell this story and yeah. to tell this journey, yeah. um, we have to go back, way back to when our country attained um, independence. Yeah. Um, the UHC story. The UHC, the UHC journey mm -hmm. actually began all the way back to 1963, 1965. And um, I remember, you know, when we were working on this program, when we were engaging uh, with different teams to try and set up um, a structure of how this can be delivered, mm -hmm. we always made reference to the paper by our forefathers. There's actually a Pan-African paper that was done that said that, you know, the Kenyan government aims to um, eliminate disease, illiteracy, um, lack of knowledge amongst other things mm -hmm. and so you can see governments from inception of this country particularly at independence have always been trying to make investments towards UHC mm -hmm. and uh, when we you know were putting in place all the different uh, platforms that would move this program ahead we did a lot of um, research we, we, tar we tried to build a lot of evidence mm -hmm. by looking at different countries how have they progressed in their journeys we actually even had um, some of these countries come in and talk to to us and try and you know work with us collaborate with us in terms of painting the UHC um, agenda and making it come into life and I can tell you purity um, for one the pure basics yeah. of the UHC agenda the pure pure fundamental elements of what his excellency the president Uru Kenyatta wanted to achieve mm -hmm. is to essentially ensure that healthcare is affordable for Kenyans mm -hmm. and so the big question on the table is where are we on the journey of making healthcare affordable and has this journey been affected by COVID-19 mm -hmm. and here I can tell you it's a mixed bag, bag of goodies mm -hmm. some you know elements of COVID-19 have definitely been useful particularly because um, the whole world has focused on healthcare. Yeah. Everyone has been talking about healthcare for the past two years. Mm -hmm. I think more than ever, people appreciate the role that health plays in their lives. I think more than ever, governments now appreciate investments towards the health sector. Mm -hmm. And Kenya has not been left behind. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen more allocation of resources yeah. um, internally, at least within the Ministry of Health, within the health sector. Um, however, of course, um, these resources have been primarily towards putting in place infrastructure to deal with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the gains that we've seen, and I'll start with the positive side as yeah. I try to highlight where we have challenges. Mm -hmm. on, on the positive end, uh, we've seen a lot of infrastructural developments when it comes to the capacities um, of our health facilities to deliver services. Mm -hmm. I think one key element is that we have more healthcare workers uh, working in the health space. Um, many may not know but through um, this government's term, we've actually employed mostly almost over 10,000 personnel. Mm -hmm. And these personnel were actually being onboarded as part of the UHC program uh, to ensure we have more nurses, more doctors. And so what we did is we quickly uh, were able to utilize this same stuff mm -hmm. for COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so that's a silver, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah more grounds you know more boots on the ground more people working more people offering services mm -hmm. um even obviously also you know ensuring that there's some form of economic stimulus by employing more young people right. so that was a positive side of things mm -hmm. of course if we look at hard infrastructure we've invested and we continue to invest in oxygen infrastructure across counties um you know there's been perhaps let me say a relooking at you know mm -hmm. do we have enough needs of oxygen in the countries um if we look at basic things like isolation centers um kenya 
had been lucky for the longest time to mm. never deal with a pandemic. You know, Ebola, you know, we had threats of Ebola, but it never got here because we were ready and we were safeguarding the country. Is that the same thing that you anticipated because at uh, that time the pandemic had not even hit exactly. any African country? Exactly. So were you prepared for such a time or exactly. would you say you are, you are focused? Because I remember mm -hmm. it was in 2020 when uh, we expected that UHC mm -hmm. would be rolled out exactly. uh, to the rest of the 43 countries. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, again, it's interesting. The world did not see COVID coming. Yeah. Um, as a country, one good thing is that we always have what we call pandemic prepare preparedness plans. Mm -hmm. Those are plans that all governments have, not just Kenya. Many governments sit and, you know, determine should we get a shock in terms of the health system, usually a pandemic, how will we deal with it? So we had our plan. But I can tell you, experiencing COVID made us move faster mm -hmm. when it came to setting up infectious disease units. It made us move faster when it came to interactions and engagements with the experts. I'm sure you've seen all the experts who are now, you know, helping us manage this pandemic. It made us move faster when it came to testing facilities. Remember, we started with just two labs and we moved quickly to about 47, now even more labs across the country. So there were gains. Um, and when we look at the UHC journey, of course, there were disruptions. Mm -hmm. Primarily at that time, we had, you know, no idea in terms of we have a pandemic coming in. And so our focus was on, you know, can we ready our health facilities to deliver services to Kenya. Mm. And it's interesting, having engaged with uh, different Kenyans, the main thing that they want is we want doctors in the facilities, we want the medicines available in the facilities, and we want this healthcare to be affordable. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the government was already starting to tick these boxes. Yeah. In terms of healthcare being affordable, we had already started looking at NHIF as an implementing vehicle for this. And again, um, interestingly, because when, when, when you invited me here, I was reflecting on this journey of UHC um, and I've been engaged in the journey now for almost yeah. five years yeah. uh, even prior to me taking the current appointment that yeah. I hold and I looked at NHIF and it's remarkable um, many may not know but short of maybe seven years ago you could not get cancer services through NHIF you know short of you know seven to five years ago you could not pay for dialysis with your NHIF card. NHIF only took care of your daily bed ribbit. Mm -hmm. That was it. Five years ago, you could not get your surgery done. You could not get your fibroids removed. You could not get knee surgery. Now you can. Mm -hmm. And really, that's a testament of what UHC is. It's a journey. And of course, the end goal, you know, what is the end goal? What did the president envision? Of course, it's that everyone in the country, all Kenyan citizens, all 47 million of us yeah. are able to have access to that card and that we are able to walk into a health facility, find a doctor, find medicine and be able to get care. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are working on. Is this a journey that will be completed by 2022? Most likely not. With the pandemic right now particularly, there have been disruptions, like I've told you. A lot of resources have been invested towards COVID-19. And so this is now a journey. Mm -hmm. But however, there's a silver lining mm -hmm. because one of the key, key bills that we have in parliament right now is the NHIF bill. And I'm sure you've had discussions on yes. it. And this bill will actually cement and will form part of um, the stepping stone towards UHC. And right. why? Because mm -hmm. it mandates mm -hmm. that we will all be able to have a UHC card or an NHIF card and we will work with that card and the card will allow us to access services. And COVID-19, it's let's say it's a case study because yeah. part of the uh, UHC agenda mm -hmm. is to ensure elimination of diseases, but we are still struggling mm -hmm. with flattening our curve. Yeah. We are still yeah. above the 5% yeah. recommended yeah. by the World Health Organization. Yeah. Is it mm -hmm. Kenyans who are not doing enough? Is it right. resources? Right. Right. Uh, that we do not have. Right. Wh what exactly is the problem? So I must say, um, and we've been seeing this yes. uh, positivity rate going down. I think if we were having this discussion yeah. three weeks ago, we would have been at 11, 12 percent, maybe even 16. Today we're at 6.6 6. percent. And when we discuss with the health providers, when we talk to the CEOs of the different hospitals, they're telling us that even they are noticing that admissions are reducing. Mm -hmm. um, this morning I had a talk with some of the private sector CEOs and they're seeing declining admissions. And so for, you know, these efforts that mm -hmm. have been put in place, I'm sure the restrictions that were there, I'm sure our vaccination program is starting to make headway in reducing, you know, the numbers of COVID-19. And would but you like, say the mm -hmm. vaccination drive mm -hmm. that we are having as a country mm -hmm. has a hand in this? I would say, and right now, I mean, that's a very good question. Um, as, as 
the expert teams in the ministry are trying to do that, you know, mathematics to really define what has been the proportion of cases averted because of the vaccination campaign. But what I can tell you without any doubt is that this is one of the big, big, big uh, weapons we have against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, countries who've gone before us in this have demonstrated good success with vaccination programs. And so for us in the Ministry of Health, for us as government, that is one of the tools that we are mm -hmm. using, perhaps one of the bigger tools that we are using. Mm -hmm. But you raised an important point earlier. Are we doing enough as citizens? And, and really, you know, the idea here is, you know, we've spoken horse as a ministry. Yeah. Individual responsibility is so, so important. When I walked in here, uh, you know, this evening, I asked all of your teammates here, have you been vaccinated? You know, have you, are you, are you sure you got the job? Which job did you get? Mm -hmm. Are you on your first or your second job? These are important conversations that we need to have mm -hmm. in, the, in our homes, with our colleagues, with our friends, with our community members, because really at the end of the day, that step, that individual effort for you to go get a vaccine, that individual effort for you to mask, that individual effort for you to have your sanitizer or wash your hands is so, so crucial mm -hmm. against and this pandemic. And why I ask this, um, the ministry, do you have a strategy? Because mm. we've been seeing surge, you mm. know, the numbers mm. come down, mm. then we experience another exactly. wave. Uh, from the scientific or mm. expertise point of mm -hmm. view, mm -hmm. will the vaccination, you right. know, exercise mm. maintain the curve the way it looks like? or right. Are we expecting to see another cycle? Because clearly mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a tiresome experience. I, I, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. I agree with you. You've, you've picked the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. It's a tiresome experience yeah. for everyone, for government. It's tiresome. Mm -hmm. um, and we need that stability. Now, when we look at it, if we can be able to meet our target of 10 million vaccines by December, that will definitely be very helpful when it comes to containing um, this disease and this pandemic. And so that's one of the measures that we're looking at. If we can ensure, and this is very important, Purity, that we have some form of order as we engage people, you know, we're getting into a political season as a country, then if we can stem, you know, the groupings of people during that time, if we can conduct our politicking in a different manner, then I'm sure we'll be able to have, you know, a dropping down of this curve and a continuous decline. Mm -hmm. However, on the flip side, Purity, if we continue mixing, if we do not have people coming forward for vaccination, if we have a new variant, and you know this is a disease that's you know, continuously, it's a virus that's mutating, then you know, those are things that we need to safeguard against to ensure that we don't erode our gains. And so right now, it's all determined by our individual efforts and this vaccination program. And I can tell you, um, the Ministry of Health um, has been successful in running vaccination campaigns in the past. Yeah. In fact, Kenya, as you would know, um, has been lauded for doing very good you know, work when it comes to childhood vaccines, mm -hmm. when it comes to our BCG, our, you know, all the other d vaccines that we give the young, the, our young children. And so we're using the same artillery, we're using the same stuff, we're using the same infrastructure and mechanisms that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily now, at least in the coming few months, we do see that we will be able to have our doses available in the country, at least maybe 9 million of them. Mm -hmm. And so these doses will go a long way in stemming this disease. And talking of the doses, the World mm. Health Organization did forecast a 25% mm. uh, mm. decline you know, in the supply of yes. doses. And right now we have um, several vaccines mm. in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. How do you assure Kenya Mm -hmm. the ones that have received especially the first doses mm -hmm. of the new vaccines that mm -hmm. we have in Kenya mm -hmm. that when they are due they will okay. receive ti on timely their second doses again this mm -hmm. month at the end of this month we expect um, expiry of some of the doses mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we received mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. early this year mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. can you update on right. do we have any vaccines that will be expiring right. and what do you d intend to do to ensure right. enough supply right yeah. so very good question yeah. um, you remember when we launched our vaccine uh, campaign we had the challenge of not having enough doses yeah. in place to just ensure that continuous momentum yeah. of the vaccination program and uh, through the efforts of government, through the efforts of the Ministry of Health, we were able to secure more and more doses. And together with our partners, particularly the COVAX facility that was really supporting countries, uh, different countries across the world to provide this vaccine, started sort of giving us, you know, there were inflows of vaccines, steady inflows of vaccines. Mm -hmm. When we look at our figures right now, we've administered close to 3 million vaccine 
jabs, let me call them jabs, have already been administered in the Kenyan population. Uh, when we look at what is coming in, in the coming weeks, in the coming days, in the coming months, we have projections that we will be able to at least meet our target of 9 million. So when it comes to supplies, it may not be a challenge for now at least with the projections that we have right now. Now, when we look at the reception, people coming forward to receive the vaccines, I'm pleased to report we're actually seeing more demand. Um, I'm sure you've had people waiting in clinics, in, in hospitals, long lines. And so there's an increasing appetite from Mwanainchi to come and get their vaccines. Now, when we look at the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccines, Sinopharm, those ones that require two doses, every time we're doing our computing, once we issue doses, the expectation, particularly in, in terms of our logistics, is that we will obviously be able to avail the second dose. However, there was a challenge, if you remember some time back, where we had delays in the doses coming in. And we were able to, of course, consult with you know, WHO and all other partners to determine when is the optim optimum time for you to get your second dose. Mm -hmm. And so what we've seen from that experience, what we learned from that experience early on this year, is that in terms of doses, the doses will come. The vaccines will come. Mm -hmm. The main thing is to push to ensure that they come on time so that you can ensure you get your second dose. And we are happy. For example, those who received AstraZeneca, we more or less have secured their second dose and they'll be able to get it. Mm -hmm. But you raise an important point. How do we ensure continuous supply mm -hmm. of these doses? And I, I am especially proud of what we've done as, as government because Kenya is one of the few countries in Africa that has actually been able to put money on the table and procure uh, vaccines for itself. And I'm sure you joined us in the airport where we receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccines. We do project at the end of that we'll be getting about 13 million vaccines um, in the country, J&J. &J, and these are only single shot uh, vaccines, mm -hmm. meaning our success in terms of reaching individuals will be better mm -hmm. because it's just one shot you don't have to come back for the second one and so we have seen and we are talking to jnj teams to make sure that supply becomes steady mm -hmm. so far we have agreements um, that aim to project to have at least 500 doses coming every month. Mm -hmm. um, remember, J&J &J is situated in South Africa. So again, a proud moment for Africa. Right. Vaccines made in Africa, vaccines bought by Kenya, made in Africa. Um, and the hope is that the logistic framework and the supply chains in South Africa will enable us to continue getting, you know, continuous, you know, stocks mm -hmm. of J&J. &J. Right. But in terms of resources, in terms of finances, Kenya has secured those finances mm -hmm. for those vaccines. Oh. Right, I'm told time is not on our side. Right. Really. There's <laughs> no. so much to discuss There's on the so unity much journey. There's so to yes. talk about, yes. but maybe parting short. I right. welcome your parting short right. on uh, do you pride yourself as a ministry even as we, you know, head to 2022 and, yep. you know, the head of state's right. uh, term comes mm. to an end and right. he had actually mandated the ministry right. to ensure that the UHC is right. achieved. Right. Where do you, what is right. your position? Are you proud? I can tell you, one, as a health economist, yeah. because that's my background. Yeah. Um, um, Kenya has made big strides. Yeah. The fact that we have a bill in parliament that is going to cement UHC, a bill that is going to mandate UHC in Kenya is a big, big step towards making this possible. And uh, secondly, if we look at all the other in investments that we've talked about in the Ministry of Health, you know, centers such as the Kidney Institute, uh, oxygen available in our health facilities, good collaborations with Council of Governors, more staff working in the health facilities, um, discussions and task forces that are going to reduce the cost of medicines in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think we're moving definitely in the right direction. All right. We shall definitely revisit this conversation. Definitely. <laughs> please, please receive my invitation Thank in you. advance. Thank you. Thank you so much, there. Dr. Masimo. Thank you so for much, Pierce. Thank you so much, Pierce. Thank Thank you for watching. That's the end of this discussion. We had Dr. Masimo Ngangi, Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of Health, talking about COVID-19 and UHC. Keep talking to us at KBC Channel 1 News and at Purity underscore Musio. The hashtag is Prime Edition. Cynthia Nyama is up next to the day's business. Stay with us.